Hello everyone, I'm Psychotic, and that's also my screen name. Alrighty folks, so goggles down and cannons up, it's time to talk about combat. It's a bit more nuanced than any of us really think prior to our first go on the wrong side of the cannons, but if my crew of Darkened Pirates can handle it, anyone can. Forewarned is forearmed, as they say. So we're going to be going over some combat and fleet setup. Uh, we're going to be covering personal combat, we're going to cover NPC pilot combat, we're going to cover in-sector and out-of-sector combat, what ships and weapons work best for which mechanics. I'm not going to tell you how to build your fleet, although I will show you my own preference. I'm not going to tell you how to build your ship, but I will show you my own preference. Uh, most of it boils down to play style and comfort level. There are several setups, both in ship and equipment, that are perfectly viable, so we're going to try to aim more for the mechanics instead, since anything will really fly. So right now, we are chilling in my personal katana, which is one of my favorite personal combat ships for the early game. Uh, it does require a bit of reputation depending on your start, which if you watch the video on reputation, why you want it and how to get it, that will tell you how to get what we need to do. So uh, it requires the, the setup that I have, and we can actually get in here and upgrade it and see what we're rocking. So we've got the split Mark IV engines, combat. Um, so the difference between the combat engine, the all-around engine, and the travel engine is the combat engine has no spool up time. If you hit your warp, you go to warp. It, now you do have the, the uh, speed creep once you hit it, but you don't have to wait before it engages. The all-around has a fairly short wait time, but, and a high, but it has a higher uh, top speed than the combat. Now, the travel has a very long spool up time, but it has the highest top speed, and you can tell that by the stats if we were to click here. So, if we look at our travel speed is 5,900, whereas the combat speed is 4,500, and then the all around speed is 4,400. So, you can see this is the slowest, medium, and fastest, but also no spool up time, short spool up time, long spool up time. So that's, that's part of where it is. The other part is in combat. So your, your uh, speed factor, not your travel speed or your boost speed, but your speed speed is how fast you go when you're not boosting. So your speed stat is what you want for your combat engagements. And if you look, the combat engine's got 519, the all-around has 495, and so does the travel. So as far as that goes, you really want combat engines for your combat ships. Now, you can get away with other ones if you don't plan on running, and in some of my larger ships, that is definitely something that I do. But in your smaller ships, that's probably something that you're going to want to aim for. Now, as far as what ship to pick, you're going to want either a small or a medium combat ship. You really don't want to try fighting a scout if you can help it. You want something that's fast and maneuverable, and something with solid defense and offense. Uh, my preference is the Katana, because it's got uh, two turrets, which is fantastic. It has four guns, which is amazing. And it has two engines, which gives it quite a bit of speed. And it turns really well. It also has two shield slots, which is really nice. Its hull's not super strong, but it, it is what it is. Everything else kind of makes a pretty good all-around package. So our engine here, the Mark IV uh, Split Combat, can only be purchased from the Split Patriarchy, the ZYA, not the FRF. Even though they're both split, only one has it. Uh, and you have to be at least rank 10 with reputation with the split to purchase it. Uh, thrusters, just the highest combat tier. That's, that's all I really worry about. Uh, as far as shields go, I went with Terran. And that's because of the combination of their decently high uh, shield amount and their decently high recharge speed. There are shields with better recharge speed and there are shields with better... Uh, high-end um, high shields on them. Uh, although, with the Terrans in the smaller ships, you can get up to a Mark III shield instead of a Mark II, which gives you quite a bit of a difference. So, so if you look here, it's actually better in every way than the Argon one, because it's the Mark III. But it also costs me an arm and a leg. Now, as far as weapons, my favorite weapons to use on personal combat ships don't actually work on mediums, which, unfortunately, this ship is considered a medium. Um... So I just went with the Terran Pulse Lasers due to their damage and refire rate and cooldown speeds. Now with the turrets, I came and got the Argon Flak Turrets. So the Flak Turrets are actually... They, 
They're an AoE turret. They shoot, and then when they make contact, they damage everything in an area. So if you're really lucky, especially if you're only engaging with your own class or smaller, then that splash damage can potentially take out their weapons, their shields, their engines, and leave them worse for wear while you're planking away at them. So that's that's why I go with these. Um, software, just the high end of everything. High end docking computer because I'm lazy. Uh, flight assist you have to have. Long range scanner as far as we can make it. Police scanner so we can see what they've got. Targeting you have to have. And trading because you never know. Uh, as far as consumables, I've got plenty of flares in case we encounter missiles, which is highly unlikely. Unless you're picking a fight with some of the core factions, you don't really have to worry about missiles. Um, the Paranids are absolutely gaga for missiles, and that makes them a nightmare to fight. But everybody else, I, I don't know that I've actually encountered missiles a terrible lot. I've got a couple of laser towers just for the oh shit moments when you try to bug out. Uh, and then some probes, just if I'm out and about, I can drop some stuff down. Uh, crew, we've got a full crew. I'm doing a racist playthrough on this. I did a Boron start, so every person on this ship is Boron. Even though it's a Terran ship with uh, split and Argon parts, everybody on it is Boron. <laughs> so, But that's the setup that I've got here. Now, there is a little bit more to the setup that needs to be gone over here. If you are rocking, you can come up here to your loadout, if you are rocking turrets, you're going to want to change their behavior. So they start out by defend by default, which sounds great, but they will only fire on enemies if they shoot you first. So even if it's a hostile and even if it's in range, it won't start shooting until you've been hit. Uh, you could set it to attack all enemies, and in most cases that's not a terrible idea, but I tend to set mine to, if I'm using flak, to fighters, and if I'm using the uh, pulse ones, then I set them to capital ships. And we'll get into that more when we get into the fleet stuff, because this doesn't have the capability for those. But it is set to attack fighters, so as soon as I come in range, they start, sh they start shooting. And we are good to go. So one of the core mechanics that, that is a little bit confusing about this, especially if you've played other space games, and we're actually going to start heading over here to where we're going to start some combat. But uh, one of the mechanics that can be a little confusing is a lot of space games have you try to dogfight, and that's fine, but that does not work so, whoops, that does not work so well here. Uh, if you try to dogfight, you're probably not gonna have a good time. So the way that I have found best works for combat, because you really don't want to, you really don't want to sit there and play hit for hit with them either, because in most cases, that's gonna get you hurt. Um, even if you can sit there and go hit for hit with somebody, you still have the issue that they are going to... Oh, I forgot to set my mark. They're almost always in groups, so you're still going to get overwhelmed if you just sit still and try to hit for hit or try to dogfight with them. You're going to get ganged up by other people. So what I like to do is more of a jousting uh, method. So instead of dogfighting, chasing them around, trying to keep up with them, I actually purposefully drift past them and fire on them all the way past, and then flip around and come back and do it again. Go. So we're going to go and pick a fight with some Xenon. I was going to try to do this on the other save, the one where we're going to do the fleet stuff, just to do it all in one go, but uh, that save, I, I don't have anybody left to one-on-one -on -one combat. The, I only have enemies in two sections. And, uh, oh, hey, hey, there we go. We got a winner. So we're going to go ahead and hit that control space bar to turn around and let our boost take over. So we got a Xenon here. It's a fighter T, so it's a recon. It's their version of a scout. And he's already boosted. Shoot. Yeah, see, we could have fired on him there if I'd been more prepared. So what we're going to do is keep an eye on the distance when that X in front of them turns into a uh, circle like that. Because if... Whoop, that, that distance isn't going to change unless you mod things. So that's not something that you really have to worry about changing over much as you play. I 
and he's gonna run. He's not even gonna fight. And as you can see, I mean, we're we're going very fast. We are almost scout levels of speed right now. This ship is amazing for that. Uh, it's turning a little bit like a brick now. Uh, it it as far as a medium ship goes, it's actually turning phenomenally. It's just that I am used to my modded version for my other save, where it really does handle, no kidding, like a scout. Even though it's a medium craft. So through this gate is Xenon Space. We really don't want to go through there. There are some big ships on the other side that will absolutely massacre us. So now this ship right here that we're getting ready to go up against is another medium. So this is medium on medium violence here. Six. All right, and they've twigged that we are actually shooting at them. So this way you dip in and out fast enough that your shields have a minute to breathe for you. The problem with, and you can set your speed to enemy ships. That is a thing that you can do. The issue that I have with that is as they start to angle, oh, we are sitting still, that's not good. But we won, so it doesn't matter. And you wanna watch those explosions in the bigger ships, those will destroy you. In these smaller ships, it's not really an issue, but. Um. But that's how we handle, or at least how I handle, uh, personal combat, is it's more of a jousting match and less of an actual dogfight. Especially when you've got more than one like we're about to have here. Why are you not... there we go. Yeah, when, when you match speed, anytime that they start to turn... That was a weird hiccup. Anytime that they start to turn or do anything of that nature, you're going to have issues pacing them. And staying in range. And then they will get extra shots off because of the way that the AI navigates. So that's a medium down. Always make sure that you pick up their loots. Um, the stuff that they drop is actually what you use to make uh, mods. So that's stuff that you really, really, really want. Alright, that was a security slicer. That's less important. So their platform's not even up yet, but we don't really have enough guns to... Uh, do much about that. We'd be sitting here for hours. So we're not going to worry about it. And you can see this is just raffle stomping the light, guys. Oh, we're 20k out. I don't know why I'm shooting. Yeah, basically you just keep up with the, the jousting, and it helps too because it's going to pull them further and further out, which is taking them further and further away from their friends, so you're not getting beat up by a bunch of different people at once. How did that not take him out? He has like zero hit points left. Um. Now if you get swarmed, obviously it's best to bug out if you can. And that's definitely a thing that the ship is capable of. If you can get away from them long enough that you can get some shield recharge so that you can... Uh, there's a little icon that shows once you've taken damage that you can't boost. As soon as that icon drops, remember that with the combat ship, or the combat engines, you can immediately start boosting. 
you don't have to wait like everybody else does for the spool up while they keep planking at you. So that's a thing to, to bear in mind as well. But that's pretty much all there is to the uh, personal combat. Definitely keep an eye on your icons. You can tell what something is by its shape on the map. And that is something that you definitely, definitely want to handle. Now I'm going to be a little bit lazy here. And we are actually going to make the NPC fly us back. So I don't like the autopilot. The autopilot will take you there. But... If you want to dock someplace, it won't dock for you. You would have to actually manually dock. Actually, let's remove all orders and tell him to dock. But if you let them fly it for you, he's going to come in and he will fly it for us while we're on the bridge and dock us so we don't have to worry about it. And this is a good time while he's flying that you can manage your fleets and whatnot. Uh, I've done quite a bit of exploring. I did get up to 10 with the, the uh, Terrans. I had to. Oh, that's the Borons. I had to to get the ship. Because um, you can't even get into the systems that it's in. You can't get into Mars without having 10 with them. They will blow you up in Asteroid Belt if you try to, to make that jump. So I came down here and did some trading and some mining for them. And got my rep up that way. All right, we are going to hop to our other save, and I will bring you back when we get there. And we will go over some fleet building and some other additional ships and different strategies for the larger ships. All righty, everybody, we are back in my main save now. Um surprisingly enough it not a lot has changed uh we are still in a katana personal fighter but if you look i have a bastard lot of stations and fleets i have a lot a lot of fleets and i'm actually in the process of building another fleet here right now which is why this is going nuts right now um not a huge deal so, uh, the Xenon got a little out of hand for me, and they actually took out all of Split Space up here, with the exception of Wretched Skies 5, which is ZYA home space, and the only place that survived on the, uh, FRF was this system right here. This is all the FRF own. And I started FRF Split. So my boys here are all split. Uh, I decided that I was going to go on a pogrom and take all of the space back from the Xenon. So when I discovered uh, Boron space, I took this over. This was super easy. It was just some Ka'ak bases to take out, no biggie. Uh, and then I wanted to build a bunch of stations here. And uh, I didn't want to pay for them. So I ran the Boron out of their own system so that I could claim this area and put stations down for free. But other than this, I have not actually fought any of the default races. All of my fighting has only been done against the Xenon. So this is how f out of hand it got before I could do anything about it. But now I have run them back to where these two are the only two systems that Xenon have left. And as you can see, I am parked on their doorstep, and there's nothing they can do. Oh, wow. Uh, apparently, the Talati have had enough of their shenanigans, too. But I am parked on their doorstep with a defense fleet, which is why I wanted to bring in this uh, save for fleet reasons. Uh, I also accidentally started a war with the Vig. Um, they tried to pirate one of my ships right next to one of my de defense platforms, so the defense platform blew them up and one of their patrols was right behind their pirate, so he tried to do something about that, and then the next thing you know, I had a full-scale war with these guys. So I'm actually parked on both of their doorsteps as well to where they can't get out. So I've got a fleet down here that's holding, this, holding them in here, and then I've got a fleet up here that's holding them in here, and then I believe we have a fleet over here as well. Yeah, we've got a fleet here on this jump gate as well. So all of these are major fleets that are just defensive. 
Uh, I don't actually even know where I am right now. Okay, so there is a thing that you can craft that allows you to move the simulation along at six times speed. That is something that I do a lot when I'm doing fleet combat or taking over. You can see I'm starting to expand here too. I figured we're we're split. We will we will own the space. Um, but the problem is when you have this many ships on screen, um, because everybody's got a cap to how many ships they can have, and because I have made the universe virtually safe, everybody is pretty much at their cap now, with the exception of the Xenon. So, I mean, that's why we have just hundreds of Talati ships and men ships out and about now. So if I were to hang out in this system my performance would suffer so bad the game would be virtually unplayable. So that is why I am parked way up here where there's pretty much nothing going on. There's just a couple of ships going through. That way I can command things remotely without completely tanking my computer. Especially when I'm running at 6x speed because some of the ships that we're going to play with are a little bit slow. So um, this one I am actually going to undock. We're going to take over can I help yeah I, I want you to let me Goodbye. fly please you can see they're all split all right so this one we will see just what a difference mods make with speed and maneuverability of your ship So if you look, we turn way faster. I haven't even killed the engine yet. If I do that, we move faster still. And then our boost speed is quite a bit higher than what it was on the other ships. So mods are something to shoot for, and the only way to make the mods is by blowing up the other ships, uh, particularly Xenon. Each race has a an item that they are more prone to drop than the other races but Xenon drop them all. So they make the perfect punching bag. And as you can see, my speed is much, much higher in this ship, even though it is the exact same loadout as the other ship. Uh, so we're actually going to let them redock there for us and be lazy. Now, the, the thing with the shift four to do six X speed is you must be in control of a ship. So if you are docked, you can't use it. You have to be chilling in space as the pilot. A nice workaround for that is if you come over to navigation, now we can hit it. You can hear it ticking and see how everything's moving super fast now. And we're going to kill it while she tries to dock or we're going to wind up inside something. Um, if you're in navigation, you count as in control of a ship so you can do it. But also, and the super important part, is you can do it while you're docked. So you don't have to worry about somebody blowing you up. And we're actually going to dock on my own defense platform because I know that nobody can do anything about it. Uh, at this point, with the amount of ships that the VIG threw at us that we just completely smacked away, I'm pretty sure that my defense platform works just fine. So, four fleets, and here's where it's important to know the difference between in combat and out of combat um, systems. So, in combat, your pilots will perform based on their pilot's skill. So if they're high star, they do better. If they're low star, they do worse. Um, the capabilities of the ship are taken into account as is where they are. That's why being in busy systems is such a problem. For out of system combat, your guns will hit 100% of the time that they fire. Your turrets will hit 50% of the time that they fire. So knowing that you can kind of build accordingly. Um, I went mostly split ships because I, I really like the high hull points on theirs. So we're going to look at, let's see, we'll take Vig Guard Fleet 2. We'll expand this. So I've got an Asgard, which is actually a Terran ship. Uh, let's... So that's the Asgard. Is it going to let us pan at all? No? Oh, that's, that's not ours. Uh, the Asgard is a battleship, and the reason that I have the uh, Terran battleship is because it's the only battleship that you can build. 
Now, the downside is you have to build it. You cannot purchase the Asgard. Um, even if you are max rank with the Terrans, which I believe I am, um, I think I'm actually max rank with everybody. But you can't buy it. You have to build it. The same with the Sins, and I've got some Sins in here too. So I've got a fleet set up of, I have three Asgards as a spearhead, which means even if they throw an eye at me, I just trash it. Most of the time I don't even lose ships. If I do, they're small ones and I don't care. Uh, oh, that's a different big fleet. All right, we're looking at this one. So we've got the three Asgards, and then in the Asgard, I've got another full fleet behind each one of them. So this one's got a Raptor, which is a carrier. Now, the reason I chose the Raptor is because it can hold 100 small craft, and it can launch them 20 at a time. But it also has 101, I, I think it's 101, turrets. So it is just a beast of a ship when something encounters it. I didn't want info. I wanted to see if it would let us look at it. Uh, live stream view. Okay, so that's not... We're not going to fool around with the live stream view. It's not going to be as, as useful as I had hoped. Um, now, behind that raptor, with the Asgard... So my alpha group here are all set to attack uh, the as this Asgard's target. This Asgard is set to attack this Asgard's target. So I can, com I can control my entire fleet with just this ship. There are 20 large ships. There's one supply ship. There are five of the extra large ships, two of which are carriers and uh, three of which are Asgards. And there are 40 small ships because while the Raptor can hold 100, it can only launch 20 at a time. So I only have 20 on each Raptor so that they can all launch simultaneously. Now the Rattlesnakes I have set up, uh, Rattlesnakes are great player-based large ships. Uh, the AI, they are a little squishy when the AI controls them. They c it, in, in player hands, they can wreck a K like it's not even a thing. Even though it's the same class of ship, it's, you can completely outperform a K. Um, you can also take down a station with it just fine. And it has some decent gear on it as well. So this is where I was talking about with our turrets. So the turrets on this, I, I have the beams set to defend. And these are our rear-facing guns. And you can tell when you're actually in a, uh, 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 um, shipyard, what, uh, which position, which gun is. So the, these turrets are rear facing. So I have them set to defend only, and that's to take out anything trying to get to my engines. The plasmas are set to attack capital ships because that's pretty much what they're designed for. Anything small is going to be able to evade too well. And then I've got several flax to clear out any fighters. And I have them assigned appropriately for that specifically. I also have four defense drones that I, they're armed, but I, I don't really pay any attention to them. And a couple of repair drones in case I lose engines or a shield or something. And then the, the basic uh, main battery that they come with, because you can't really equip anything else on the Rattlesnake but the Rattlesnake main battery. So that is what it is. But that way, I've got my bases covered for large ships, I've got my bases covered for small ships. But... I have them set to attack targets of this Asgard. So they're going to go after whatever I'm targeting. Now the Sins are also set to attack target, but these guys are tanky as shit. If they encounter fighters, there might be a problem because they are kind of slow, but they can go hit for hit. Five Sins can easily take out a uh, K without taking any hull damage whatsoever. So that's, that's another reason that I've got them set up the way I do. So each of these mini groups are set up to basically completely handle what's going on. Um, this fleet is admittedly overkill, but overkill is the best kill. So that's why it's set up the way that it is. Now with the Raptors, there's an additional fleet. This is our third nested fleet. So we have the main fleet, the sub fleet, and the sub sub fleet. I have 10 of these set up as bombers and they are set to bombardment. So when you set your uh, fleet options, when you set them to bombardment, they will only go after capitals. They will completely ignore fighters. So that's why our bombers are set to bombardment. Now interception is the reverse. Interceptors will completely ignore capitals and will only go after fighters. But 
Both of these options are better than defend, because defend will wait until this raptor takes damage before any of these will do anything. But with interception, as soon as something enters this raptor's scanner range, these will be deployed if it's a light ship, these will be deployed if it's a capital ship, and they will all be deployed if it's a fleet. So that's why the options for your fleet are super, super important. So you have defend commander where they will only fight if you get hit. You have attack with commander where as soon as you tell the commander to attack something, they will go after that same target. Intercept makes it so that they will intercept for the commander only fighters. Bombard makes it so that they will only go after capital ships. Follow commander only makes them follow. They don't fight other than their own behavior. And then mimic behavior, if you watch the rep video, you will understand what that does and why. If you didn't, it makes them literally mimic the uh, commands that you have given to their particular leader. So in each of these guard fleets, I have an Atlas E, which is the tankiest. It has the most hit points of any of the supply ships. So this is assigned to the group as a supply fleet. So it is actually supplying commander fleet. So if any of these ships on the Raptor take hull damage, or with the bombers, if they start to run low on torpedoes, they will come over to the Atlas and uh, get repaired for free and re-up their ammo if he's got it available. And I think he actually lost his trader. I think that fleet was a bad example because we lost a trader. But um, the... Yeah. So he should have had a buffalo assigned to him that is specifically trading for the group. I have it set to defense because if you have it set to trade during combat, it'll try to run because of the way that I have my trade settings set up. But if I set it to defense, then it will defend him in during combat. And if I notice that we're running out of something, I can switch him over to trade for and he will go to the nearest station and pick up what we need. So that's, that's why he's there. And the reason I'm using the buffalo is not because it's fastest or it holds more or anything like that. The only reason I'm using the buffalo is because it's got guns out the wazoo. So it's not completely useless while it's in defend mode. Unlike most traders. So that's the fleet composition that I've got going on. And admittedly, this is overkill. You can get away with much, much smaller. Um, my pirating fleet is a completely different setup. I don't even... I just saw them. There they are. Rat collection. So I've got a boa that's trading for the Atlas that's repairing the ships that they pilot pirate. I've got a cobra for boarding actions. I've got a discoverer for actually pirating. And then I've got a scout for scouting. Go figure, right? And then I've got a pulsar... I don't remember why I had the pulsar. Now, for out-of-sector combat... I, pr I prefer out of sector for these guys, uh, particularly when you have got the Raptors. They have 101 turrets that have a 50% ch chance to hit, uh, but also they are running the same turrets that I had on my Katana, which means splash damage. And the problem with that is, in the scrum, when all the ships are crashed together, they will damage friendlies. Now that splash damage isn't a problem when you're not in system. The other thing to remember is large and extra large ships, when they die, have massive explosions that w can and will kill small and medium ships. So if you don't make your Raptor recall their fleet Im immediately on uh, killing blow, then because you have a couple of seconds before the explosion goes off, but if you don't have them recall immediately before killing or at killing blow, you're going to lose some ships. So when you're out of, sec out of sector fighting, that explosion doesn't happen. So you don't lose any ships. And that's why I prefer to fight out of sector when possible with fleet combat. Now the VIG, I haven't been in their system in a while, but these are the only two hostile systems that I have left to show anything. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, and I've got my research maxed on teleportation, so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and teleport down to this Asgard. Are you the leader? You're the leader. Oh, and behavior. So I've got these, this fleet is set up as a defense fleet. And you have a couple of options here. So I actually uh, shrank. They're, they're set to protect position 
in company regard, and I shrank from the max at 40 kilometers to 10 kilometers, because if you have it set to 40 kilometers, it's obviously four times the size, but they'll drift around in that area, which means if something's coming through the gate, they're not going to be there to inter intercept it if they're, you know, over here. So I have it shrunk down to keep them right on top of that gate, and then I've got a defense platform to, to mop up. Now, the problem with the defense platforms is if a hostile ship comes through, if it doesn't fire a shot, the defense platform will let it go right by. But with this fleet here, if something pops in, they are set to aggressive because of the protect position. So they will fire a shot, which will then make this start shooting. So anything that comes through here is well and truly boned. But we are going... So you can see the ship looks pretty cool. But we're going to go to external once we get through here so that we can see what's going on with all of the turrets and guns and whatnot. I really hope that the uh, Raptor opens up because it is a sight to behold when it does. Now I'm not going to change these guys' commands because I don't want to wipe out the last of the Xenon here. I'm actually using them for farming stuff. And I have a uh, scout set up on repeat orders that is doing nothing but collecting loot over here and taking it back to my PHQ so that I can use it to reroll mods. And we will get into that again here in just a minute. But for now, we're going to do in-system fleet combat. We're just going to pop through, start some shit, blow them up, and then get back out. We're not going to take out any of their stations or anything. The idea is not to cripple them. Entering system. Scale plate green. And All right, so we will They're gonna come we don't even have to go to them. Oh, we have a traffic jam Well, it looks like the raptor's uh, entourage got there. Oh, there's some cannons going on the raptor. But you can see just how much they're missing. And that's because none of these pilots are capped. And see, my turrets automatically start shooting at them. But they're not hitting very much. You can see just how difficult of a time they're having Danger. nailing these targets. So at this point what we're going to do is we're going to give command back to the captain who's going to take the whole fleet back through. Because right now we're just right here. And while they're doing that, we are going to teleport back to our uh, katana and watch how quickly, as you saw, that we've only actually destroyed one of the five ships that showed up in the amount of time that we've been chilling here. But as soon as I leave system, that's going to be an entirely different ball game. Oh, that's my personal battleship. There's my katana. Entering system. Wretched skies. Right. Katana. So now, we're going to go ahead and let them do their stuff. And just look at them destroy this stuff from the out of system combat. They've already wiped out the other three. Oh, maybe not. There's yep, one down, one down. I don't know if they'll go after their trader or not, or if they'll go back where they're supposed to be. It looks like they're going home. Yeah, they're going home. Oh, that's where their shipyard is. Okay. Oh, that poor trader. He's going to get away with it, because the Raptor left system, so his people are leaving too. So that is why I prefer out-of-system combat. Now, if we go after the VIG... But those are the things to remember, that your, your in-sector combat, you are reliant on their skills. 
with your out of sector combat, you have a 100% chance to hit with guns and a 50% chance to hit with turrets. So now what we're going to do is I am going to mod this save so that we have access to not this save. I'm, I'm actually going to save in a new slot and mod that save. But we are going to modify this so that we can see what some of the uh, mod equipment looks like. I don't have enough to do a real good showcase left over because I've already modded a bunch of stuff. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to modify a copy of this save so that we have an unlimited amount of mod materials so that we can tinker. So we will be right back. Now because I'm max level, I can teleport anywhere up to and including stations that I own or stations that I have 30 rep with people in. So we're just going to unpause and wait for that teleport to go through because it's our station. There we go. And we are going to go to the shipyard. Well, first let's go to the trader's corner so I can show you how to make the Seda. So you would come here to a crafting bench in any of the trader's corners. You can see I gave myself a max of everything, except apparently that one. I missed one. But if you go to craft an item, oops, we should have Seda here somewhere. We don't have any delirium either. Oh, Seda, right here. So it takes one damage singularity engine, one damage flux capacitor, and one programmable field array. You can get some of those parts from um, data vaults, but you can also get all of those parts from destroying Xenon. So they make a great punching bag as far as that goes. But that Seda, once you have it, you just hit Shift-4, like you would Shift-1 to um, do your what you call it so we are going to go to the ship dealer so when you're in the ship dealer you can actually buy ships here if you don't want to do it through the map like we do um, but there's also a crafting bench here and a workbench so the workbench would be where you would go to mod so I don't know what ships we have available here well, we've got him, so let's take a look at him. So what you would do here is you, you would take a look at your different tiers of mods and what you want to put on them. So, like, illegal uh, wear concealment, I don't care. So we're, we're looking at chassis mods right now. So the only thing that I'm really going to be interested in in the chassis mods is going to be uh, either honeycomb which is going to help you turn and move a little bit faster. Or, um, oh, where's the hurricane one? We can do nanotube. So it'll tell you, ship's mass but uh, down between 10, well, 9% and 23%, and one random property. So if we would install this, we got ship drag is decreased. So that means that we're going to accelerate faster and be able to travel faster and probably be able to stop faster. But it's not going to help us much with the turning. It's going to help us a little bit, but not a terrible lot. I don't know why Hurricane's not here. It might be because it's not a large ship, but that is what it is. So with our repeaters... So with your guns, here is a neat mechanic too. When you're modding your guns, your turrets... There is a base quality mod that is my absolute go-to for these turrets. So there's one... It is the reload speed. I think. Is it the cowboy? I really should have brought my own ship is what I should have done. Let's, uh... Here. So, in our katana, we have the nanotube mass mod. So that gives us reduced mass, very high roll, reduced ship drag, makes it much more maneuverable. We've seen how maneuverable this one is. It is almost as good as a scout ship. Now for your lasers, 
for your guns, I go with Annihilator because it gives you additional weapon damage, additional weapon cooling, faster reloading, and faster rotation speed for tracking. Really nice. Um, there are some other good options through here. Bear in mind that, uh, n one, not only will the higher tiers have more options available, like there's four on the purple, but two, you're going to have different setups, like there is no blue equivalent of Annihilator. There's a damage mod, but it's entirely different. It only has three, and you will probably get some different stats. Now with the turret mods, I actually prefer to go with the green slasher on these guys because the weapon cooling is a hell of a hit on your primary guns, but you get a huge increase to damage and twice as fat, up to twice as fast. You can get these to roll at 100%. Uh, it takes a lot of effort, but you can do it. So that's double the reload speed, so double the refire rate on your turrets. Now the, the weapon cooling on a primary gun is not good, because you're not only are you shooting twice as fast, but you're overheating a third faster. But turrets are actually immune to the heat mechanic. So that's what makes this thing super S tier for your turrets. There are other options, I'm not going to tell you how to play, I'm just going to tell you that I use this and that's why because the heat, the cooling doesn't matter. We have twice the refire rate and a third again damage per turret by using that. On both turrets. That one's not as good of a roll as the top one, but it's still pretty solid. And then your shields. On each one I've just got buckler. Uh, just increase shield capacity. And then on engine mods, engine mods is where Twister was. Okay, so Twister is your rotation thruster. So this, we can't strafe as quickly, but we can turn faster. And since you strafe so slowly to begin with, that's not really a loss. That's kind of a no-brainer. But some of these other ones, like there's travel mod, uh, travel thrust mod makes you travel faster in travel mode. Uh, there are a bunch of different options. And even if we go in purple, I still prefer... I guess we could go with Whirligig, couldn't we? So that's going to be engine rotation thrust. So, oh, that's why. Oh, I missed another one. So I missed two when I modded this save. But uh, we would roll this and potentially get better and then two additional options. So that's, that's what's going on here. But, like I said, I mean, I'm using Twister and it's super effective for what I want it for. And it's a green mod. Uh, the turrets, the best mod in my opinion, is the green mod because the the loss to weapon cooling is not a big deal. I really like the Annihilator. There are several other v valid options though. Now if you look here, this is where modding can get a little bit confusing. So Annihilator's got a damage mod and Obliterator is also a damage mod. The difference is the additional stats that can roll on them. And that's something that you're going to want to check the wiki for because I do not remember all of them offhand there are multiples that can fit in these three slots and these three are going to be different so that's the between the annihilator and the obliter obliterator they are going to be different and even the damage cap is different this one has a lower low but a higher high this one has a higher low but a lower high so that's where your mods come in and pretty much at this point, tinker, experiment, have fun with it. Anything that you do here is going to make you better. And the as far as the combat goes, you can do everything in a vanilla ship. You do not have to have mods. That is not a necessary thing. But that is that is what I wanted to cover. We've covered personal combat in the jousting motion instead of dog fighting uh, get a smaller medium combat ship that is fast and maneuverable solid defense and offense I prefer the katana I'm not going to tell you to get the katana I'm not going to say it's the best it is up to preference and what you have available I do however highly recommend that you don't go racially pure on equipment that you go for what stats fit your playstyle best make sure that you shop around try to get rep up with everybody so that you can actually see what's available and jump with those um i i have a very particular setup that i prefer i like the combat engines from the split i like the hulls from the split because they have super high hit points 
and they are very maneuverable and fast. I like the shields from the Terrans, because you get an extra mark out of them, same as you do with the combat sh uh, engines from the, s the split. I like the Terran gun, or the, the Terran main guns on my um, katana, because of their refire rate and their range and damage. Uh, Argon guns tend to have the best damage, that's why I went with the Argon flak instead of the split flak. Split flak fire faster, but they have a much reduced range. So I feel like it's more effective to have the Argon guns. But that's that's why you want to mix and match. You want to have some fun with it and make sure that your setups are comfortable for you. But that's the mechanics are the key. Remembering that your guns have a 100% chance to hit when fired in out-of-system combat. Your turrets have a 50% chance. And in-system combat, you are reliant on either your skill level if you're piloting or the skill level of your pilot. So if you've got a two-star or a one-star pilot and you're hoping that they can best two ships of the same size in combat, it's not going to end well if you're in that system. I mean, we saw the example down here with Scale, scale Plate Green when we popped in there where uh, five ships showed up and we had an entire combat fleet there and in 30 seconds we'd only killed one of them because they were just whipping circles around the big ships. They weren't actually hurting anything but we weren't able to take them out either. The second we teleported out of Sector, it took them less than 10 seconds to smash the other four. So <laughs> it is important to remember the difference between in combat and out of combat. And that is why I set up my fleets are overkill setup, but that is why I set them up the way that I do. They complement each other. And remember what the fleet options do. Remember that, oh, that's the wrong fleet. That one is just 12 Asgards and it is specifically designed for taking out stations because I can tell them to attack a station and it will be dead before that station can kill any one of those Asgards. That's how I took over all of this space. I would send them in and then I would send in the defense fleets to guard in the uh, interim. But remember your options with your fleets. Your defend only attacks if you if their defend if the person they're defending is attacked. And also, if they are attacked and not the person they are defending, they will not defend themselves. They will only defend their fleet commander. The, this option is kind of a trap. Uh, attack with commander makes them actually attack the commander's targets. It's good for setting up like three, three prongs like we have here. So both of these Asgards will behave as this one is, so they'll go after whatever I tell them to. Uh, intercept only goes after light and medium ships. Bombard only goes after large and extra large ships. Follow commander only follows, it does not fight. And mimic commander behavior mimics the commander's behavior. Whatever command you've given the commander, that is what the, the person in this slot will do. And then the uh, oh, and then the supply, if you have a supply ship, will actually repair for free any of your ships that are damaged but not dead. Uh, if they blow up, it can't do anything to help you. But if it's damaged and it took hull damage, it will go to the supply ship to resupply. Also, anybody that uses ammunition, if they get below the threshold that you set in your global options, they will go to the supply ship to resupply as well. So those are the things that make a fleet super powerful. And there are other fleet options. There was one more thing that I wanted to cover. And that is my bait fleets. If I can find one of them here. I think I named them police fleets. I honestly don't remember what I named them. Ah, Baron Shores Patrol. So, if you're having problems in your trade lanes, as you can see by the number of turrets that were dropped through here, laser turrets, I have been harassed incessantly through here. So what I do to get rid of pirates that are giving me problems on my patrol fleet is I have one large ship and two medium ships that are uh, attacking his target. And he is set. I threw some trade goods in an inventory. He doesn't have them. One of these ones has them. There it is. So this behemoth. Oh, man, that one's overkill. So this behemoth actually has a rattlesnake and two mediums following him. But I loaded him up with energy cells because I had a surplus and it, it was handy. But because he has a trade good in his inventory, any pirates that scan him 
are going to try to attack him, and he is set to attack pirates. So as soon as they try to scan him and tell him to drop his cargo, they are faced with two large ships and two medium ships in their face. So any pirates that spawn in this particular stretch are kind of boned. And all that I did was set him up for repeat. I believe I have him on repeat. Yep, repeat orders. So he flies here and he waits, then he flies here and he waits, then he flies here and he waits, and then he goes back and does it again. Because this is where all of these are dropped, so that's the region we need to patrol. But he is a, a bait ship. It is a high-tier combat ship that is specifically designed to get pirates to try to get him to drop his cargo. That's the only thing he does. And I've got them in several different systems where I have problems. Anywhere that I've got a bunch of these, there's a bait ship. Like you can see through here, didn't need them. But right here, this was a problem area, this was a problem area, and this was a problem area. Now unfortunately, all, well, and this stretch was too. Unfortunately, these are pretty much stuck there because they don't, they don't despawn, so they just live there now. But uh, it helps you to identify problem areas if you give your trade ships a couple of turrets and tell them to drop them when they're harassed. Drop them and flee. So it will leave that, and you can use it as kind of a marker to see where your problem areas are. But that is, that is all that I had on combat today. So if you learned anything useful today, or if you had a good time, please don't be afraid to drop a like. And if you're feeling friendly, maybe go ahead and subscribe. But either way, have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will catch you next time.